let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. is the call to worship. I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwells. For the Lord is his holy temple. They are the before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O Savior, to the Lord, for he is the marvelous. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord by singing hymn 122. Go, tell it on the mountain. Go, tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept there watching over silent flock by night. Behold, throughout the heaven there shone a holy light. Without further lining, let us sing with uplifted voices. Go tell it on the mountain.
seated. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we give you the praise. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus was born, and we thank you, oh God, because you bless each and every one of us from last year up until this present time. Father, we cannot give you enough praise. You woke us up this morning. You watched over us all night long. You brought us through a week. Some experienced sadness. Some had other problems, but still in your word, it said the ass seeking knock. And you promise to hear our prayer. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we won't walk out the same way we came in. Remember the members who are sick. Remember those who are facing the loss of a loved one. Lord, thank you for all that you have done for us. We if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough for which you have brought us up until this present time. Remember our pastor who will be bringing the word. Father, help him and help us not to walk out the same way we came in, but when we leave, others will know that we were in your presence. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for it all. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to read in your hearing the 34th Psalm, which says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked at him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivered him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm going to repeat that. Oh, yes. taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lion like and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not like any good thing. Right. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and love many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eye of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cried out, and the Lord hears and delivered them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and save such as have a contract spirit. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Right. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servants. And one of those who trust in, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. I chose that scripture because we face it a new year. Lord, God has brought us through a long way. Yes. Amen. Yes. We are here today. This past two weeks, 
My sister-in-law was killed in a car accident. And you know when you read about more funerals than you do weddings, you just thank God that he has brought you thus far. Amen. That he has made a way out of no way. And for 2024, he will do that and more. May the Lord bless you. We continue to lift up those who stand in a need of prayer. But we realize that all of us really need God to just touch us in a special way. As we prepare our hearts to depart from 2023, we want to go into 24, praising God from whom all blessings flow. And so we're gonna ask that you would come back tonight at 1030 and let us do that. Let us pray, let us praise, and let there be a preach word. I have invited my home church, St. Paul Amy Church, out of Clawson to come and join in with us Amen. Uh, Amen. as we bring in the new year together. Amen. Part of what we're seeing that's going on in America is division, splinter groups. It used to be a time uh, where, where the, the Republican or the Democrat would uh, get on the floor and debate a bill and then go out and play 18 rounds of golf. It used to be a time when the, the uh, prosecutor and the, uh, the defendant lawyer would uh, go out and and uh, have lunch together. And no matter what news outlet that we are looking at, that we are watching, we are seeing division. And so it is our prayer that in 2024 uh, that there be unity. Amen. And uh, let it begin with us, but unity in the community, uh, unity in this country, uh, that this country uh, will be better in the days of head. Um, and we, uh, um, somebody asked a question when the president, former president, talking about uh, making America great again. Mm -hmm. What time period was he talking about? Mm -hmm. well. And nobody yet has been able to answer that question. And the only way that you're going to make it great again is that we got to put God back in it again. And so let us come and, and let us lift up the name of Jesus. I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make. Uh, for the organized lay members, uh, letters of an intent for the 2023-2024 conference year are available in the North X. Uh, everyone that is seeking office is to complete and submit his or her letter to Mrs. Thelma Archie by January 14th. All offices are currently vacant. And so they're asking uh, those persons who wish to run and be a part of the organizer lay uh, to please get your letter of intent. On the third Sunday in January, uh, the lay organization presents Show Your Colors Day. And uh, on that third Sunday, they want you to uh, represent your high school. You can represent your fraternity or sorority. You can represent uh, the NFL team. Uh, only exception, no Cowboys, <laughs> no Patriots. You'd be stopped at the door. Um, and, and certainly also on that day, uh, Masonic organizations um, as well. Um, whatever it is that you want to represent or you want to rock your, your college, um, they're asking you to present, uh, show your color on that particular day. Um, January is coming in. Uh, there are a plethora of things that's on the calendar that we got to keep up with. 
next weekend, uh, missionary lay retreat is coming up. And so the calendar is full. Um, the full Sunday in January, we have our second quarterly conference. Um, and I'm, um, I'm asking to meet, uh, not this coming Tuesday, perhaps the next Tuesday, meet with all the um, organizations of the church that we can talk about the, uh, the quarterly conferences and we can talk about um, what does ministry look like um, in 2024. We are indeed uh, grateful at this particular time um, that the Sons of Allen across the conference uh, chooses an individual from each district um, that's in college to, um, to give a scholarship to. And so uh, hopefully on this day in the Marion District and in the Sumter District and, and here on uh, the Florence Dillon District, uh, we want to present um, a young man uh, with a scholarship from the Sons of Allen. Um, this young man is a student at uh, Tuskegee University, and uh, he is uh, in the Naval ROTC. Amen. Amen. So hopefully and prayerfully, um, we may be able to write a story about him, about an officer and a gentleman. Amen. Uh, but uh, he plans to be a, a Naval officer uh, majoring in supply chain management, and, uh, and we are indeed grateful uh, to recognize him on this day. And so I'm going to ask Brother Bridges if he would come. <laughs> Amen. present to him uh, what the Sons of Allen uh, across the conference are sharing with various um, students. We want to say that we're proud of you right. and, and what you're doing at uh, Tuskegee. Um, and we know uh, because you come from good stock right. uh, yeah. that you're going to do well. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Uh, he, he, he told me, you, you must have been raised uh, like how I, um, I raised my children. He said, you have no choice. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> you don't have a choice. And so we're going to give him an opportunity just to say a few words. Talk to the church family. Morning. Morning. Name is Stephen Bridges. I am a fourth year supply chain manager major, double minoring in history and military studies, attending the illustrious Tuskegee University. <laughs> um, just want to say, um, give an honor to God, making all things possible. Um, secondly, to my parents, the doctors, Bridges, and my younger brother, Robert, and his absence for their long, loving support over the years, because, you know, journey hasn't been easy, but, but God. And I just appreciate... <laughs> and last but not least, to you all, the Mount Zion Church family, from the day that we first moved here, I was that young boy, you watched me grow over the years, just... I appreciate everything you guys have done, will continue to do, and this is just the beginning. All right. Do we have any other college students that are here with us? Any other college students? Come, I want all the college students um, to come around the altar. Um, I want to do a special prayer and ask the church to pray for you. This would be my daughter's uh, last Sunday here prior to going back to USC. Uh, she has some commitments uh, that she needs to do um, with her sorority and, and, um, and, uh, and I want to pray for all of the college students. Uh, if you are a parent of one and, uh, and they're not here and you want to come around the altar, you can as well. Um, and you can certainly come and stand with your child. Um, I believe in the power of prayer. I'm here today because my mom and my daddy prayed for me. Yeah, they prayed for me. They, they prayed for me. And they did more than just pray. Amen. Uh, they believe in what the Bible says. Uh, something about yeah, the rod 
Yeah. Yeah. And I want the church to stand because this is our altar call moment. Our young people, whether they're in college or whether they're in high school or, or whether they're in elementary school, they're, they're under a satanic assault. And, and, and those persons, those educators, those teachers, those administrators that have to deal with them on a daily basis, they're under assault. And we used to sing a song back in the day that says, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land, but we're going to pray it down. We're going to sing it down. So, Brother Bridges, we're proud of you. We're proud of what you're doing. We're proud of all of our young people and the great work that you're doing. And as Brother Bridges has already shared with us, you can't do this alone and you can't do it by yourself. God is an omnipresent God. He's everywhere. He can be places that your parents cannot be. But if you call him by his name, God will show up. And I just want to let somebody know that when God shows up, God knows how to show up. That's the kind of God we serve. Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our the life that they're living and God we pray that you would just cover them Father we plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet God that no matter where they go that God remind them that you are with them every breath they take every step they make God promise never to leave us and never to forsake us. Father, go with our children. Keep them from hurt, harm, and danger. And then, God, as they go to prepare for another semester, Lord, give the increase, God. Open up the book, and as they begin to read, Give them comprehension that they may understand, regardless of whatever it is, God. Go with our children. Go with every professor, every president of every college, every administrator, every teacher, every counselor. Go with them, oh God. Let them know that you're God and beside thee there is none of them. And we'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church of the living God say amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
So now we know who the singer in the family is. <laughs> Amen. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for being so good, so kind, and so merciful. Father, even in the midst of bereavement, in the midst of grief, in the midst of sorrow, we still owe you a praise. Yes. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be this morning? Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Now, Lord, hide Jonathan behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning we want to call your attention to the gospel according to Luke, the second chapter, looking and reading verses 15 through 20, the gospel according to Luke, verses 15 through 20. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marvel at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all things, all these things, and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. I want to put a tag on that text this morning, and I want to talk to you from the subject, the shepherd's story. The shepherd's story. This morning, we get an opportunity to transition from the season of Advent to what we call Christmas tide. Christmas tide is the 12 days of Christmas from Christmas Day into what we call the Epiphany. It's important for the body of Christ not to move too fast through biblical events. We can miss receiving the full meaning of Jesus' birth when we place him in a manger one Sunday. And in a few weeks, we are nailing him to the cross. There are golden nuggets, valuable information that we can receive when we slow down and we hear what the Spirit is saying to every born-again believer. Those of us who have a little age on us can remember the radio broadcast of Paul Harvey. 
Back in the day, families would gather around the radio to hear the local and the national news. Paul Harvey became famous for having a segment that he coined the rest of the story. The rest of the story consisted of stories presented as little known or forgotten facts on a variety of subjects with some key element of the story, usually the name of some well-known person, held back until the very end. The broadcast always concluded with a variation on the tagline, and now you know the rest of the story. This morning, we get an opportunity to hear the rest of the story. On last Sunday, we talked about a, a divine visitation. We saw firsthand how the angel Gabriel prepared Mary and Joseph to receive the king of glory. God's visit began with him sending the messenger to share with Mary what is about to happen. God visit them allows for the spoken word to encourage Mary because she had found favor with God. And finally, God visit allows them to understand that they will have a son and his name shall be called Jesus because he will save the world from their sins. In the vernacular of Paul Harvey, we get an opportunity to experience the rest of the story. When we examine the text, this biblical narrative centers around shepherds. It's important for us to keep in mind that shepherds were not uh, thought of very highly among the elites. As a matter of fact, during Jesus' time, they were considered to be at the bottom of the social ladder. The Bible reminds us that they were in the same regions and these shepherds were out in the fields and they were keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all of God's people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ Lord. And this will be a sign for you. And you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying at a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Imagine that we were the shepherds watching over the flock in the nighttime. Having just witnessed a display of the heavenly glory by the angelic choir and having been given the good news that our long-awaited Savior had been born, what should we do? We could have said to one another, did you see that? Uh, what's that all about? Oh, it's incredible. Who would believe us if we can't prove what we had seen or what we heard is even true? Quite to the contrary, even though they were terrified, the shepherds heard the words of the angel and remembered them clearly. Like Mary who hurried off to find Elizabeth when Gabriel gave 
her elderly relative uh, news about her pregnancy, it validated to them that God is working in their lives and that God had found favor with them. And how appropriate it was for the Davidic Messiah to be discovered by the shepherds in the very city where King David himself grew up as a shepherd boy. Furthermore, their finding Jesus in a manger was a symbolic reversal of God's indictment of Israel's rebelliousness at the time of Isaiah. My brothers and my sisters, today we get an opportunity to hear and to see what the shepherds have to say about the good news. A study of the shepherds searching for the Savior will teach us the importance of sharing the good news with the world. The first lesson that I simply want to leave with you is that the shepherds receive the message about the birth of a Savior. Verse 15 says, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven and the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. The shepherds heard and had seen with their own eyes what the angels said to them about the birth of the soon coming king. My brothers and my sisters, when we allow the Spirit to speak to our hearts and to speak to our minds, we too can receive the message that God is trying to tell us. And can I tell you that God is up to something, that God wants us to receive. The hymn writer said, there's a message from the Lord, hallelujah, a message unto them I give. It's recorded in his word, hallelujah. All we have to do is look and live. Look to Jesus now and live. The shepherds receive the message. Paul in his epistle to the church at Thessalonica says for this reason we are also constantly Thank God that when we receive the word of God, which we heard from you, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God. These shepherds received a word from the Lord about seeing and experiencing the birth of an awesome Savior. My brothers and sisters, just like the shepherds, we too must receive what God is saying to the body of Christ. We too must receive what God is trying to tell the church. He is trying to tell us that we're coming out of this pandemic. He's trying to tell us that when we rely on him, that God will take care of you. Is there anybody here who can testify that down through the years, the Lord's been good to you? Is there anybody that know for yourself that God is a healer, God is a deliverer, but who the Son is set free is free indeed. We must receive the message. The second lesson that I want to leave with you is that the shepherds share the good news about the birth of the Savior. Verse 17 says, Now when they heard, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. All of those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. 
In other words, y'all have heard this before. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. Yes, the shepherds weren't going to say anything to anybody, but because they had experienced the awesomeness of God, they had to share the good news. They had to tell somebody what they experienced, what they had seen. They had to tell somebody that God is a heart fixer. God is a mind regulator. God can do all things but fail. Don't keep the word of God to yourself. Somebody about Jesus. Amen. The shepherds understood the importance of the Great Commission even before the Great Commission was instituted by Jesus. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. The shepherds shared the good news. They received it. Then they went out and shared it. Mm. Can I tell you the third thing? I'm going to get out your way. The shepherds were changed because they believed in the birth of the Savior. Verse 20 says, Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Bible said, therefore, if any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ, they are a new creature. They are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. These shepherds were changed. In other words, they said, I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new. I, I looked at my feet, and they did too. I started to sing, and I had a new song. They were changed. The Bible says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your reason of service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. These shepherds had been renewed. How? Because they had been in contact with God. And because they received the word of God. And because they shared the word of God. They were transformed. They were changed. I'm so glad he changed me. My brothers and my sisters, as we go into a new year, we have so much to thank God for. shepherds that were used to being outside who were used to being with the animals God gave them a message and the Bible says that after they had received the word of God and after they had shared the word of God said the shepherds return glorifying and praising God. Shepherds with their lowly estate. Shepherds who were tending to the sheep. When they return, open up their mouth and began to praise God, began to glorify God, began to lift him up, began to magnify his name.
shepherds. Amen. The shepherds. Yes. Will change and return, glorifying and praising God. Some of us, God has continued to give us a brand new day, new mercies he's given us. And the songwriter says, says you ought to take the time out and tell the Lord thank you. Yes. And so it is that we are on the precipice of leaving one year to another year. And you know what? We can't even take that for granted. We are praying and thanking God and asking God to allow us to come on the other side. But can I tell you that there's going to be somebody somewhere who won't make it. That's just, that's just a fact. But we thanking him and praising him in advance for what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. As we open the doors of the church, as we stand to our feet, if you don't know the Lord, if you are looking for a church home, and I realize being part of the body of Christ gives you a covering because somebody is praying for you somebody is interceding for you and if you don't know God as your personal savior the hymn writer simply says give it all to him the old saints will say it this way, 99 and a half won't do. It's got to be all or nothing. And so we open the doors of the church. We extend to you the invitation to Christian discipleship. Will there be one? The door of the church is still open. Will you come?
That's all I know is what he said. And if he said it, I believe it. And it settles. Amen. Do we have any uh, visitors with us today? Amen. Any visitors? Amen. Amen. You just greet us in your own way. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming back home. And it is our prayer that God would continue to bless you and God will continue uh, to keep you. Amen. Amen. We have these, uh, these beautiful um, poinsettias. And, uh, <laughs> and we want y'all to take them home with you. Um, Aren't they gorgeous, though? Amen. 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 And so, oh, y'all got a lot of these things up here. <laughs> hmm. And a few of me, not not to thank you for sharing that. So, what we want to do is we want to um, share these with particularly our, our our senior members. And I'm going to ask the ushers that they will uh, help us. Uh, any persons here, our family members here, uh, persons in the '90s. Right, 90s. All right, 80s. All right, see some hands. Amen. Y'all raise your hand high. <laughs> you know what it, you know what they're gonna be saying tonight. Wave your hands in the air. <laughs> Waving like you just. Oh, can we in the church? Y'all, y'all need to be shaming yourself. <laughs> any any eighty babies? Thank you. All right. Seventies. Got some in the back. Oh, got plenty of seventies. All right. We, we'll save one for you. Yeah, we'll save one for you. 70s. All right, see some hands back there. All right, we got you. Still see some hands in the back. Still see some hands in the back. All right. steps in for the new year. <laughs> Get our heart rates up. Thank you. 
Everybody good? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, ladies, for, for helping out. Amen. We really appreciate that. Again, we want all of you to come back tonight. Um, we're not going to be here long. We're not going to wear your patience. But while we're here, we are going to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go home. Let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. able to keep you from falling and who can present you faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore Thank <laughs> you. 